G'day guys, so tonight we're looking at the uh, 185 watt Banggood um, discharge. They sent it to me for the purpose of video review. So we get to have a play with it. See what we can do with it. I've made up some test leads. So we can clamp them on a decent battery and load her up and see what happens. As the unit doesn't have any test leads. Uh, I'll show you a clip in a sec which I filmed in the first take slash stuff up of the uh, video and that's uh, testing the USB type C which I'm plugging into the camera right now so the camera doesn't go flat. Anyhow, long story short, we're doing this on the fly right now. So, a couple of half decent alligator clips. This side of the bench we have a 40, what is it, it's a full river 46 amp hour battery. So whatever you last had the current set on is where it stays and it will just automatically fire up when you give it a load source. So we're on one point. 86 amps which is what I was using on the USB in the footage that you'll see at some stage in the video right. Twelve amps, twelve point nine amps Thirteen amps Yeah, the fan comes on and it's an over about one amp uh, A friend of mine told me to not go too hard with it because we don't want to blow it up um, he's got one. Uh, it's got a temperature reading which is cool, so it's creeping up now into the 30s, 40s. The heat sink appears to be doing something. 13 amps is probably pushing it for these leads, so the voltage is probably lower than what it would really be. But you can see some amp hours starting to draw her off it nice and fast. And that's what we're after. We're after a good draw off. So we might. Back it down to 8 amps now. We've got it up to 50 degrees C. Let's see if it starts going backwards the other way. 54, 55. So at 50C, let's treat this like a break in test. We've got to 55. Let's see if it either statics there or starts to back off. There is obviously um, thermal paste on that chip because it's brought the temperature out to the out to the heat sink. The heat sink's actually got some temp in it and that's actually working. I'll let this run for a sec. It's dropping down. We're going down to 53. If I'm pressing this button on the side here, we can change the display to do multiple things. Stack in all different directions. Well, that, one, that one's got a time in it. Sure what any of that does. Oh, it might be a current limit. So we drop down to 52. Oh, see, we're in Chinese again. There we go. Good that it's got English symbol and Chinese at the same time. Very handy. So I do a lot of lead acid battery testing um, because I have quite a few scrapyard sources that I can buy them from. Um, quite cheap and uh, they're normally in pretty good condition. So uh, we'll go back up above 10 amps again. What's it go to? Oh yeah. Tells you when to go over 185 pretty quick. Oh. What's 10 amps? 10 amps at 12 volt is 120 watts. So essentially, it's 185 watt rating is how much heat it can dissipate out of the chipset. So uh, remember, wattage is absolute. Wattage is always wattage. Power is always power.
That's 14 amps at the moment. As you can see, that's drawing. Drawing off that pretty hard. And I don't want to blow it up straight away because I've got a lot of batteries to test. Let me drop back down to 2.7 amps. We're at 60 Celsius. And it's dropping again already. So the cooling system is effective. Imagine those little bars are like a current shunt. Or they'll just have a set value for measurement. Yeah, like, okay. In my first take of this video, I got a bit upset because I couldn't work out how to get it out of Chinese, and then I just realized you just push the button. So, cool thing. Uh, it'd be better if it was in a case, protect it from steel and aluminium and bits and pieces like that. You don't want that to uh, bash it on there and short out. Um, we're all the way back down into the 40 degree range now. Low 40s, 40. Yeah. So, uh, capacity's ticking away, watt hours is ticking away, and it just dissipates as it goes. So, it's been running for seven minutes like this. Having no real issues. Kind of been running for seven minutes. Or maybe it's just been connected to that battery for seven minutes. Whatever. Ticking away nicely. Um, this form of discharge meter is really good for this kind of testing. Um, especially if you're doing lead acids or pre made banks or anything's got a bit of capacity. There's no point really discharging single 18650s unless you want to do a rapid discharge test. See, because you can do 185 watts, you might be able to do 20 amps. So you can test sag and that kind of stuff. Throw some big leads on it. Test an 18650 for a quick drop or even a lipo. Lipo, yeah, it'd be good for a lipo. Um, you would have to see if you can set a cutoff, which I imagine you can. We'll have a play with going through what it can and can't do and all that kind of stuff at another time because uh, it's getting late. But Banggood sent me this to play with for review. Uh, I'm not paid to make any advertising. Uh, if you buy one of these through the link that I'll leave in the video description, the channel gets a kickback or anything off Banggood through the uh, affiliate link. I personally would spend the, I think these were about $40, something like that. I'd buy one for $40. Um, I actually don't know why I haven't till now. I never thought I'd have a use for a purpose-made discharger, but now that I'm using one, yeah, okay, it's a, it's a smart move. Um, I've tied up my IMAX so many times, burnt that out, burnt several of them out. Um, and then they don't work as chargers anymore either, so that's poor form. There's only one thing that's better than that, and that's the next review that's coming up. So, this wastes off the uh, excess charger's heat. This has regenerative discharge. You might remember my 1000 watt antimatter. Um, when Kabumo, Banggood sent me a 300 watt one to play with. So, we will do that. Uh, I believe Average Joe has pulled his 1000 watt one apart numerous times. I think Peter even sent him parts out of his to keep Joe's one alive. Uh, mine went boom. We called it a day. Um, I wouldn't buy the 1000 watt one. It wasn't that greatly constructed, but this one is a lot more similar to the eye charger. But anyhow, there'll be a review on that another time. These are great for their price. Very versatile, 36 volt input. Um, yeah, it can measure. Crazy. Oh, it can be powered a 5 volt micro USB. There you go. Cool. So, we'll do some more in depth stuff. Go and buy one if you want one. Uh, links in the video description. Thanks for watching. There'll be a clip at the end, probably now, of uh, me discharging off a of USB Type C. Thanks for all the. Thanks for all the views. Thanks for watching. We're nearly at 5,000 subs, guys. Catch you in the next video. Cheers. All right, so we've got the little Milwaukee power bank just there. M12 one. 
I'm just gonna have a go at wanting some. But we dropped it out instantly. Okay, it's back on. So with a one amp load, it drops to four point eight one volts. And on comes the fan once the load starts to happen straight away. Oh, look at that, it's gone to English. Volume, capacity, energy, time. That's strange. That's heaps more useful because, yeah, it may actually makes sense to me now because I really don't know any other languages. We'll turn this one up a little bit more. Okay, so the closer knob to us is the fine adjustment. And that one's the coarse. At 1.67 amps, it's only got 4.5 volts coming out of it. That really struggles. Or maybe it's the cord. Hard to say. It could be the cord. But there you go. That is how you test a micro USB out of a out of a device for its uh, output. Which is cool because it means that when we get power banks and things like that, we can test them out. Now I've used a USB Type C cord. Uh, normally one of the better cords you can use because USB Type C can handle like three amps or something like that. Uh, in this case, the little Milwaukee power pack is actually rated quite low, so not really a surprise that it's not overly powerful. Um, what we might do then is get some test leads happening and find a bigger battery.